you know that feeling after you 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 do a scene and you're driving home and you're going God damn it, why didn't I do that? It was such a good idea. Oh. And maybe it wasn't a good idea, but in the moment you're freaking out and you're like, God damn it, the whole thing is ruined. It's ruined. It's that. It's kind of that that I'm always sort of combating. I'm like, if I can stay focused and stay in it and keep thinking about it, maybe I'll, come up, I'll keep coming up with things that I can try and do. And then at the end of the day when I'm driving home, I'll go, all right, I might have missed something, but I sure as hell tried my best is to do to do everything that I thought I could do. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name's Janelle Riley. I'm the Deputy Awards and Features Editor at Variety. Thank you so much for coming to this SAG After Foundation conversation with the acclaimed Netflix series Dahmer, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. That was all one sentence. I need a moment. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I ran up here and a little out of breath. Um, today's guest, it's, he's simply one of the best actors working today. He's, of course, an Emmy Award winner for his role on Mayor of Easttown. For his performance in Dahmer, he's, be, he's already been nominated for so many awards, they're making new ones up, but they include a SAG Award nomination and wins from Golden Globes, the Satellite Awards, and a Critics' Choice Award. I am so thrilled to welcome Evan Peters. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Congratulations on another fantastic performance. Um, this is an audience of your fellow SAG after actors. Hi. Um, I usually like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? But I actually know the answer because I asked you this a year ago, and I never remember, but I remember your story. Go for it. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to do all the talking. <laughs> um, it was a PlayStation commercial. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and then I also remember this because you also said you did a Sour Patch Kids commercial. Uh-huh. And I had never, never tried Sour Patch Kids. Really? I had it never because I don't oh, like wow. gummy things. And I told you that day that I was going to try Sour Patch Kids that day. What did you think? I didn't like them. I'm sorry. You didn't like them? <laughs> But they got me hooked on um, sour gummy worms, weirdly, because I thought I didn't like gummy things. I know. And now I eat them constantly. I, I have some in my pocket right now. I'm not even kidding. Are you for real? I, I really do. Yeah. I carry them everywhere. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It works. So it was a gateway. The yeah. Sour Patch Kids were a gateway. The commercial work. Um, but you did. You started so young. I'm curious. How did you know this was a career for you, or, or did you just think you were having fun? Oh boy. Um, yeah, I think. I don't know. I, I I guess I I was so young. I was 15 years old. I didn't I didn't really know what I was doing. I still don't. Um, and I think. I was just, I, I love movies, I love TV, I like to get sucked into the worlds and watch it, and um, uh, I think I really just wanted to be inside of the movie and, and go see what that was like and, and see if I could do that. Uh, so, yeah, it was, um, I mean, I was so young I didn't know what I was doing, so it was just really playing around at that point. Um, but, uh, yeah, always, always loved movies and TV. Were there certain movies or even actors that like you saw and you kind of wanted to emulate? Oh yeah, Tom Hanks. Oh Tom yeah. Han Forrest Gump, I think, was the one I wanted to be inside of the most. The movie. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> I gotta go. That's it. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, Chris Farley was amazing. I yes. love, absolutely love, love Chris Farley and. Um, kind of underrated actor as weird as that sounds he was a beautiful performer oh yeah 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 very very honest very real always incredibly emotional uh yeah truly like yeah. like he was heartbreaking in some of really these things. heartbreaking yeah. yeah yeah he was amazing um so i really looked up to those guys a lot in those years forrest gump and tommy boy were the big influences huge <laughs> massive yeah jim carrey as well i always loved jim carrey i thought yeah there we go applause for jim um <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I love them. But you didn't grow up in Los Angeles. How did you know, you know, to get from from wherever you were to start a career at the age of fifteen? Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, I so I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. And then got my dad got a job in Michigan, and then I got uh, really uh, <laughs> there was a, the Flint Youth Theater, which I was doing there over the summer, and then um, there was a, a local modeling and talent agency 
called Avante Models. I don't know if it's around anymore. Um, but there was a photographer there who knew a manager out here in LA, and I was in an acting class there at that agency with Bill Schwerin, called Bill the Acting Guy. Uh, <laughs> loved him and loved that class, and so I, um, I did a little self-tape of a monologue and sent it to the manager out here, and he said, do you want to come out and audition? And uh, I said, Mom, please. And she said, uh, yeah, okay, we can give it a shot. We'll take it a year at a time, see how you do, see if you like it. I mean, I was so young, we didn't know if I would still be into it. So, um, yeah, I was just kind of taking it one year at a time. Do you remember what monologue you did? Because I'm always fascinated by people's monologue choices. It was from some... <laughs> It was from some teen book, some teen monologue book. <laughs> I didn't know this and was, it was a like, thing. It was like, it was this kid getting really upset about this gym teacher ordering him around. And he's like, Mr. Get to the top of the gym and climb that rope. And he's like, just bitching about it to, uh, I don't know who. I mean, you're supposed to decide. That's the kind of the acting thing. But I didn't really, <laughs> didn't really do that at that point. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, but that, that was it. That was uh, the monologue. I think I saw the after-school special this is from. This is really? ringing a bell. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it could be several things, but... <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool. Um, so, obviously, th you keep saying you didn't know what you were doing, but obviously things worked out pretty well. Um, and here you are today with another fantastic performance in Dahmer, which marks... I, I don't, I've lost track of how many times you've collaborated with Ryan Murphy. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's such an amazing partnership. What is it like to have a creative like that who believes in you so much, maybe at times when even you didn't believe in yourself? Um, well, I, I mean, he's changed my life. I feel like he has given me everything, honestly, and, and continues to give me opportunity after opportunity. And um, I, I, I really can't express how grateful I am that he... Uh, still talks to me <laughs> quite honestly <laughs> usually it's kind of like here's a job and then you don't see anybody ever again so it's kind of interesting and amazing really that um you know he's become such a great friend and and i, I hesitate to call him boss it's, it's really more of a creative collaborator who has an immense amount of power <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah I actually, we have a question from Amanda Willis, um, and, and I don't know the answer to this, which is strange, but the question is, how did you meet Ryan Murphy? I've actually never heard this story. Oh. Um, well, I met him in the, um, in the, uh, the, the studio test for American Horror Story. Wow. Uh, he was very coolly dressed in like amazing chic sweatpants and some kind of awesome blazer thing and a beanie. And everybody else was in a suit. And so he looked really cool. Um, and I was like, who's that cool guy? Because I didn't know what Ryan Murphy looked like, and I didn't know who he was. And um, so I, I uh, uh, he said, hi, I'm Ryan, and, and, and just go for it. And I was like, OK, OK, cool. And then just did it. And that was kind of it. And then we really didn't speak until being on set. And he directed the pilot. and. He is, he is just, he is one of the best directors I've ever worked with. He's so creative in the moment and so collaborative. And I remember specifically this one moment that always stuck with me. Um, it, it, the character Tate is in, is in a therapy session and he it looks over, and none of this was scripted, but uh, Ryan said, I want you to look over in the corner and see yourself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover you in blood and then we're gonna quickly pop to that and then we're gonna come back to you. And I was like, okay, that sounds really intense and uh, really like it'll work really well in this, in this scene. And so, uh, yeah, we went for it. And, and it's just kind of things like that where just the spur of the moment he'll have an idea that really is visually uh, stunning and, and, and really works incredibly well with the... With the <laughs> I remember working with him one time in Pose and he directed the pilot of Pose, and he, um, another instance where he, uh, my character is in the mirror, sort of 
getting ready to go see his date who is in bed and he's very self-conscious and he doesn't know what to do and he's sort of nervous and kind of fixing his hair and, and Ryan goes okay take the robe and like just open it up and like try to do the, try to show your chest a little bit and then be like you see your nipples and your no chest hair and you're just like, no, I can't do this. And then you just like cover it up very quickly. And it was just such a weird, uh, awkward thing for the character to do. And, and, uh, we tried it and, uh, yeah, it was just a weird, a very weird, uh, creative, um, decision in the moment. Sorry, he comes anyway. up with these on the sets yeah. and like, yeah, it's yeah. Just, that's what I mean. It's just, he, he just has, um, such a great um, passion for creativity and exploration in the moment. And I think that's what I was trying to communicate. Well, and also you must trust him to know that like, if it doesn't work, he's not going to use it. That's exactly right. Yeah. And he didn't use that <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't work. I was actually trying to remember. I was like, nope, I don't didn't work. remember. Yep, okay. didn't work. It was too weird. It was too weird. Um, uh, so I, I love that you have this great collaboration. And But what is it like when he comes to you and says, you know, I want you to play one of the most prolific serial killers of all time. Are you flattered or are you... you know? um, I mean, it's a compliment, really, that he, he really thinks you can do anything. I mean, it, 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 yeah, I think it is. It's a, uh, I think he has a little more faith in me than I, I deserve. Uh, he, he, he approached me with that. You know, he, he sent me the scripts and... Um, what was the question? Oh, <laughs> it's like, you know, what, what's it like when he comes to you and says, like, I want you to play, I, I see you playing this role. I mean, it's a compliment, but oh. also it's probably intimidating. Yeah, it was terrifying. I, I, yeah, I, I had a lot of hesitations and, and reservations about playing this part. Um, but I, I, you know, it, it, the scripts were brilliantly written, um, careful to show many different perspectives. Um, I, I, he, he told me to watch the... Uh, the Stone Phillips Dateline interview, which uh, I very quickly got the sense that he was uh, um, confused about what he did and, and really didn't even know why he wanted to do it. So uh, I was I was um, in intrigued and wanted to explore the psychology of, of him and why he did what he did. Uh, uh, but ultimately, the, the story is much bigger than, than just Jeffrey Dahmer, so I felt uh, compelled and, and pulled in to do it. I mean, this is really also a story about how the system failed. Yeah. So many people. And that was yeah. something that I don't think I was aware of. You know, I, I think we all feel like we sort of know Jeffrey Dahmer or know the story. I learned so much from this. Um, I'm curious if that was your experience too, where you were kind of shocked by, you know, things you read. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't know anything about this case. I didn't know anything about, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer or the repercussions or, the systemic failures, I, I had no idea. So it was um, uh, a really uh, jaw-dropping and um, constantly in, in stunned disbelief at um, at what I was reading and, and, and learning about. So yeah, it was, it was all new to me. I mean, I know that this has to be true, like the, with the scene where the cop pulls him over and yeah. he's, you know, got people in his in his back seat in, yeah. in trash bags and the guy yeah. lets him go like that that is so uh, uh, I'm using absurd in the sense of like unbelievable um, that it has to be real yeah I mean it's it, it, it is they, they they let him off he was a uh, drug driving and and uh, and they let him off mm. uh, so it's a uh, it's uh, shocking and and uh, unbelievable and and probably could have stopped it then in all your research, even if there wasn't something that we saw overtly on screen, was there something you picked up or a moment that really informed your performance or that you kind of went back to again and again? Maybe something that surprised you. Like I said, I was surprised constantly by this story, so. Um, I think, I think it was always sort of, it, it, again, it was listening to him speak about it. Um, you know, the, the, he was very disassociated from it, and and almost as if he was was didn't do it, or or or, or you know, very confused about it. Um, I think I think the way that he spoke about it being a long slide down, uh, this it just sort of spoke to the deterioration of how it 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 you know it started when he was seventeen and and just got worse and worse and worse until like he's. 
a complete alcoholic and, and totally succumbed to the compulsion and completely lost himself. So it was really, it was helpful to hear that. So then I, I knew that at different ages, you know, we would be mapping out sort of uh, and being trying to be very specific about where he was at mentally and physically at that time um, with the compulsion, with the alcoholism. Um, and, um, you know, huge credit to our, our makeup hair wardrobe department for uh, helping to craft the different looks for the different time periods because that was instrumental in trying to be in the correct time period during the chaos of shooting. But it was, um, uh, everybody did an amazing job at, at telling that story of the deterioration. And uh, uh, it, was, it was really a collaborative effort and was, yeah. I wanted to talk about those artisans because you can do so much work as an actor and prepare and, you know, and get in the mindset. And then you show up on set and someone puts you in this hair and makeup or puts you on one of these sets that feels so authentic. And how much does that help you as an actor just really lock in that day? Oh, it's everything. I mean, it, it really is. You know, like I said in the beginning, it's, 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 it was wanting to immerse yourself in, in a, a different world, a different reality. And I think that, um, when you have amazing set deck like we had on this and, and, and amazing DP with the lighting and, and our prop department, which everything was just very well thought out. Um, and of course, mixed with the hair, makeup and wardrobe, you, you, you really can get into it. And I think that it was very helpful for all of the cast um, to sort of make sure everything was very grounded um, and respectful. And I think, um, yeah, they were. It plays a huge part in 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 all of it because the truth is is that one of the things I didn't realize when I was fifteen is that you go to a, a set and you're not really in the movie. It's 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 there's a camera there. There's a hundred other people there. It's it's very um, intense and 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 it's hard to, and very easy to get distracted. So it's it's sort of. It's amazing when you have people who who can create the world where you can latch on to that and sort of go this is this is something real I can I can hang on to and it, put up the fourth wall or you know ignore the camera or whatever um, you got to do but that stuff is so so helpful were the glasses the final step because they're so <laughs> signature the, the, the thing is is that there's a billboard on sunset that literally is outside my balcony so i've seen oh, your wow. face a lot wow. <laughs> the last i'm people. sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 actually it's 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 become kind of funny actually because you you sort of start to get used to it after a while but like I, I study it and I just look at those glasses and I think like that I wonder if that was like the last thing you put on because it, it just says so much they were I mean that was really a challenge it was those are the first things I put on I, I was I put those on before we even started shooting because I wanted I didn't want to feel like with the glasses on your face, you know, it's, it's, it's so distracting. So I wanted all that to be second nature. Um, but I remember distinctly working with our props department, uh, which was amazing, but we, we tried on a lot of different glasses, um, and, and different ones for different time periods as well. Um, but, but ultimately it was just, it was, it was, it was a case of sort of really searching for that, that style and that frame and bringing in a professional to sort of find them and look for them. It's, um, so uh, they're very distinct uh, type glass, glasses, type of glasses. Yeah, because you don't see those anymore. No. Like they used, I remember, I'm older than you, and I remember <laughs> seeing them around a lot during that era, yeah. but you can't find them now. No. Wow, no. that's amazing. Yeah. Um, we do follow Jeffrey through several decades, and you know, over this long span of time, I'm curious about the challenges of, of playing those different times, not just emotionally, but logistically, because knowing how limited series or, or movies work, were you, one day would you film a scene set in 1991 and 1977? No way. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was part of the challenge. I, I knew it was going to get chaotic like that. So that was, again, a massive credit to our hair and makeup and wardrobe department and, um, especially Shay and, and, and Gigi, our, our, our makeup and hair, because I think at one point, you know, we went back and forth. You know, the, the, uh, the military haircut is a wig, unbelievably. Um, maybe you could tell, I don't know, but I, I, I couldn't. Um, and it, it really, um, 
it, it, you know, having to go back and forth on that in the same day is, is, is a real challenge and a time consuming one. And, um, you know, uh, Shay was incredible at doing that. So yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. It was, um, but it was part of the challenge, I think. And, and we, we kind of all knew that going into it. So that, that's again, why being very specific about what those things were that he was going through at that time, you know, using music to sort of get into that frame of mind or that time period, uh, you know, looking at what you were wearing or your hair in that time period and sort of working on changing yourself a little bit as much as I could without it being too weird um, to, to, to try to really sell the different ages and uh, um, to, tell the, to tell the series. Did you have like a playlist for the decade or something that you would listen to to get you inspired? Yeah, in sort oh, cool. of. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. of these songs are probably before you were even born, so I'm imagining. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to imagine what they were in, in the yeah. in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. There's some great songs back then, and also some terrible, terrible songs yeah. <laughs> that were big hits. <laughs> well, please don't go was was one that was throughout the uh, the series, and uh, that was a big one to listen to um, to help get into that that time period kind of a uh, I want to get like really granular and nerdy about this like cool. <laughs> <laughs> um how do you keep track do you have like a notebook where do you mark up the pages like oh, yeah no I'm I'm so fascinated by that I'm fascinated by people who can act because I've tried it and I'm bad and so like the fact that you can do it you're good and you can you know jump through all these different time periods I literally don't know how you do it I don't either. Uh, <laughs> we'll make something up because there's an audience here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, just kidding. Uh, yeah, I think my script is always so fucked up. It is like destroyed and notes and coffee and all sorts of food and it's disgusting. I actually learned I need to put on one of those little binder covers or oh, no report way. covers, which is very, very helpful, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I mark the hell out of it. I, I, I have to, I, I just, I get these ideas. I got to write them down. I circle, I scrape. I, it's, it's just a, it's a big old mess. I actually probably should organize it a little better because maybe I'm losing some ideas within the chaos of it all. But, uh, uh, I do that. I, I write, um, I kind of, it's not special. It's just, it's just really journaling, you know, to sort of figure out what's, what I'm going through that day and kind of how I, uh, you know, what I need to do in order to, to sort of match what's, what's called for, for the day. So that's pretty helpful to sort of check in. Um, and, and, and timelines, I think timelines are mm. incredibly in, important, uh, especially on this one. Um, it, there was so much, you know, that, that at any given time period, I'd sort of have to go, okay, well, what, what what has happened? What do I know? What am I aware of? Sort of what am I, what is everybody around me aware of? And um, it was constantly changing. So uh, it it was very very helpful to have that. And we had amazing amazing script supervisors uh, that were so so instrumental in making this thing work. Because again, you're doing triple up days, and and you're you're like, what the hell time period am I in? What just happened? You know. Um, so it was uh, it was it was a little chaotic, but I think when you have those kinds of tools, you can you can do it. What were the most time periods you did in a day? Like two, or maybe even three? Um. Y yeah, I think so. I think I think I think two or three. You know, um, you're kind of bouncing back and forth uh, between between episodes, and the episodes are also bouncing back and forth. Yeah, that's also crazy. Yeah, so I think that was that was sort of the challenge. It was sort of a double bounce around. <laughs> um, I saw your co-star Nisi Nash earlier this week, um, and she says you are lovely and that she, you know, really liked getting to meet you after the show was shooting. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. talked about this a lot, I know. Um, I actually, I completely understand why people stay in character or stay in a space when they're shooting. I, I, you, I don't think that you... 
I don't think it's actually healthy to take yourself out and then jump back in. Um, is that something you have to do in every role or is, is, and again, I don't want to imply that you're staying in character, but like, you know, you're, you're keeping a certain mindset probably. I think that's a good way to put it. I think it is a mindset. I think it, it, for me, I always, I think it's just impossible to, to, to interact with a crew and, you know, accomplish a scene or rehearse it or talk to other actors in, in the character. I think you're sort of, you know, staying in the mindset, I think can be very helpful, um, and staying in, in your zone and, and, and not getting distracted. You know, I think it's very easy to do that and then you forget your lines or where you needed to be or you miss an idea that would have come to you. So, uh, yeah, I think it's it's really important. And Nisi, I love Nisi. I love Nisi so She's much. And I wanted to hang out with her and talk to her so bad and just, just have a good time and laugh. Um, but I was so nervous uh, because I knew that, I mean, all of our scenes are in contention. So I was like, if I start being really friendly and of course I was cordial and good morning how are you and we would rehearse and whatever but then I'd go off and you know doing my thing and uh it was yeah so it was it was tough but I'm 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 glad to have now I know Nisi yeah. and we can hang out and we can laugh well she's so funny she's so like funny. I wouldn't want like I would want to keep her at a distance too if I was about to do a dramatic scene because I'd be yeah, giggling exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> although she gives a, a, a oh my god a phenomenal Phenomenal performance. Oh my god! I well, I yeah, truly believe I mean, if you can do comedy, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah they, they say it is harder. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. I remember like because I think people like on the outside can can hear things like um, I, I remember an actor talking about how he went into auditions in character and people were like kind of scoffed at that and he's like, look, if I'm it was actually it was for a serial killer. He's like, I'm about to walk in there. I don't want to say like, hey, how's it going? How are your kids? You know, and then and slip into this like, yeah, I go in in a mindset and then when I'm done and the work is done, I'm happy to talk. Sure. You know, yeah. but it's just like on the surface, sometimes it can sound like, you know, people don't understand what this alchemy is. Yeah. I think it's different too for every role. Yeah. I think the challenges are different. Um, and I think, you know, if there's a certain necessary camaraderie or bounce back and forth or, or improvisa- imp- improvisation uh, between actors, I think that it's, it, it's a good thing to sort of talk and, and hang out and, and uh, get to know each other. Uh, I think that each, each scene and each character sort of is different. I, I've always sort of, I, I it got worse <laughs> over the years. I, I didn't used to, I mean, I always, I, I feel like at an audition one time, I, I was very intense about what I was trying to do. It was a very intense scene and I didn't, I, so I was trying to really get into it. Um, but uh, I think, I think over the years, I've just sort of just got more and more, um, I really, you know that feeling after you 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 do a scene and and you're you're driving home and you're going, God damn it! Why didn't I do that? It was such a good idea. Oh, and maybe it wasn't a good idea, but in the moment you're freaking out and you're like, God damn it! The whole thing is ruined. It's ruined. It's it's that. It's kind of that that I'm always sort of combating. I'm like, if I can stay focused and stay in it and keep thinking about it, maybe I'll come up, I'll keep coming up with things that I can try and do. And then at the end of the day, when I'm driving home, I'll go, all right, I might've missed something, but I sure as hell tried my best is to do, to do everything that I thought I could do. Um, and that, that to me is what I, why I try to stay in it. I think. Do you have a, a ritual of letting go of a role when, when you're done? Like uh, I like, I always go to Hawaii when I've had really? a group. Oh, I that's do. awesome. Well, yeah. My family's there, so it's it's oh, cool. not the vacation, it sounds like. Oh, <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> but when I finish like a big work season, like that's in like I reset. You yeah. know, I don't know if you have anything specific like that. I uh well, I, I go home as, to St. Louis and see my family. That was pretty important on, on this one. Um uh, see friends, uh, decompress. I, I think for for this role uh, in this series, I I absorbed as much information as I could about it and tried to stay in it and and sort of stay in that mindset. So I think immediately when it was done, I was like, let's watch Step Brothers. You know, let's <laughs> let's just let's listen to some eighties pop music. You yeah. know, let's you just change the channel and and then you can start bringing in that kind of energy and that information and that 
that somehow starts to change you and you start to lighten up a little bit. So um, that's kind of the process on that. I love that you love Step Brothers. That was my Halloween costume a couple of years really? ago. Yeah. <laughs> me, awesome. me and my friend, yeah. <laughs> Which character? <laughs> well, I was, because my last name's Riley, I was John C. Riley, and Amazing. her last name is Farrell. Amazing. So, wow. yeah. I know, right? <laughs> That's perfect. And I still have the sweater and the wig, and wow. yeah, no, it was fantastic. I would love to see you in a movie like Step Brothers. Oh, that'd be so fun. <laughs> Can we make that happen? Can we will that into existence? Please, let's do that. Please. <laughs> Let's call up Jenkins. <laughs> That's right. You can, Richard Jenkins can play your dad again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, can I ask what's next? Do you know at this point? or uh, Something lighter. Okay. Uh, that could be anything, though. That could be yeah. Oppenheimer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, that's very true. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, something lighter, I think. I, I think sort of, yeah, getting out of the darker worlds a little bit would be nice. Well, regard, I cannot wait to see what it is. Um, before we go, I want to ask if everyone can stay seated because he actually has to be somewhere else. And also remind everyone, in case you didn't already know, all the episodes of this are on Netflix so you can watch it again. Thank you so much for being here. I really Thank appreciate it so you. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.